And then we were very pleasantly surprised when, when Ms. Helmreich called us and said, you know what, it's been a while since I've been to my hometown. It's been a while since I've been to Athens. I'm just going to come in. And we've been in panic mode ever since. <laughs> <laughs> because we you guys have a wonderful knack for just opening your arms and hearts to newcomers. And all us newcomers are really, really grateful. So thank you, Athens. And I remember calling my mother and said, Mom, guess what? I'm going to play the other woman in this wonderful movie. <laughs> Mom, are you there? And she said, you can't be serious. And I said, oh, yes, ma'am. I said, you don't realize that, see, in the movies, why Bette Davis got her start playing the other woman in a movie. And it was great. And she said, well, I don't know Bette Davis. <laughs> I know you get the good girl part. <laughs> so, so you were invited to the White House and, and you you accepted an award. If you could tell us two stories about that, one, tell us what the award was and, and why why President Truman invited you to the White House, and secondly, tell us about your escort and just what what transpired uh, after you got your escort. Ask a question. <laughs> well, you know, World War II was our World War. And in Hollywood, they had made movies about veterans coming home in a paraplegic uh, process and problem. And then you remember the wonderful Better Years for Our Lives. The young man had his arms, his hands cut off. And so, our little uh, program was, our, our film was about a young blind uh, person who, it was, a, it was a true story. This young man was blind and he became a lawyer because of his wife reading law books to him. And he learned Braille, of course, and he became a very, very important lawyer in Philadelphia. And so the, the uh, writers wrote a script for a movie for it. You know, they always say the book is much better than the movie. Well, it really was much better, but we don't talk about that. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> we uh, were sent to do this movie. And um, I never shall forget it. It was the last real movie I did. And um, I remember g going in, uh, all the, the whole cast and the uh, photographers and everybody went to this place in Philadelphia that uh, taught blind men to rehabilitate themselves. Plus, uh, there were paraplegic buildings. It was a 75,000-acre plant of, of taking young men and rehabilitating them. It was really uh, the most fabulous, uh, you know, kind of place I have ever been. It, it, you, you can't imagine all the things that these marvelous doctors would do. And uh, we were coming in, you know, off the bus, and they said, now you're going to meet all these young men from all different kinds of the, the service. You will meet sailors and officers and Air Force and all the rest. And he said, they're here, all the ones that have just come from this wonderful school are there. And you'll really be in, uh, have an enjoyable time. And so, he said, the commandant said, but remember, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all these young men that you see chatting with one another, they're all blind. And it gave us a real start. We, we worked with these wonderful people. We would, uh, we would notice they could walk right up to a wall and stop just inches before the wall. And they'd say, well, Charlie, why did you stop? 
and they would say to the doctor, because there's a wall in front of me. And how did you know that? And he said, I could just feel it. All the senses were just beautifully, you know, sharpened. And they could bowl, they could do things. You know, we'd say, you gotta be seeing. <laughs> They'd say, no, we really can't. But we're, we're trying to do everything. And it was a wonderful experience in a hard way. But that was, anyway, we were asked by President Truman to come to Washington and receive an award for that movie. So the studio picked me to go to Washington to accept the award. Well, in the meantime, I was kind of dating a young man by the name of Walt Helmerich. And he was going to school in Boston. And I was having a career in California. And so every weekend, he would take a propeller plane and fly from Boston to Los Angeles, and we would have a nice date. And we did this for about two and a half years with an engagement ring floating around and <laughs> the whole thing. And I would get furious with him, and he would say, oh, come on, let's get married. And I'd say, are you kidding? You don't even have a job. I've got a career here. I went to Washington and they said, oh, Peggy, you have to have an escort, of course. We will supply your escort. We will, and I said, no, 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 no. I don't like blind dates. You know, I want, I'll find somebody that I know, you know, somewhere that I can ask. And, and I thought, oh, Walt Helmer, I won't call you. I won't call you. And, you know, it said, oh, he'll be the best. He can talk to anybody about anything. He's just finished Harvard Business School. He knows everything. Oh. So I called his mother, and she said, Peggy, he's up in North Dakota at some little place up there watching a will for, well for his daddy or something. And I said, okay, thank you, ma'am. And I called him and I said, Walt, I tell you, just, uh, I have one little request. You just come into Washington for a couple of nights and then you can just go back and President, Roosevelt, President Truman's going to give us a wonderful award for the movie. He said, oh, Peggy, how nice to hear from you. I would love to come if you'll marry me. <laughs> I mean, there was always a hook to it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you.